Hi, I'm Nathan Pierce from F5 Networks. I'm a member of the Next Generation Data Center team specializing in dynamic infrastructure architectures. Today we'll look at dynamic resource allocation, a process whereby at no time are resources provisioned or deprovisioned, neither created nor destroyed, thus delivering an element of agility without change to operating system, application or network. There are two types of dynamic resource allocation, overflow and tiering. Common to both of these methodologies, all potential resources are pre-provisioned and ready. However, the methodologies differ in that with overflow, we have standby compute resource ready for on-demand access, whereas with tiering, we dynamically reprioritize an application's access to the compute resource. In this scenario, we have virtualized applications and services provisioned across hardware by an application delivery controller, in this case F5's local traffic manager. In the middle we have an overflow host that is a copy of all the applications and services provisioned and running, but in an idle state. Now we can see that application A's resource requirements have increased, pushing some hosts to 75% utilization. Service is now at risk. Next, the orchestration engine permits application A to access its instance running on the overflow host. The service utilization continues to increase, but with no risk to end user experience. So to summarize, there was no change to infrastructure, no IP addressing, hostname allocation, or introduction of operating systems and services, consequently low risk. On the other hand, we achieved a relatively low gain as far as dynamic infrastructure is concerned due to the need to have overflow hosts, but still an improvement over no consolidation at all. Now on to tiering. In this scenario, we have a data center that has been heavily consolidated and is now dangerously near capacity at peak times. The problem is that we have low priority services getting equal share of compute resource as high priority services. Note tier 1, 2 and 3 all having equal share of resources. With a dynamic tiered approach, we have an orchestration engine enforce a reprioritization of each tier of service. First by instructing the application delivery controller to reduce the connectivity to tier 2 and 3 services. Second by instructing the hypervisors to reduce tier 2 and 3 access to underlying compute resource. The result, the Tier 1 apps and services are able to flex their requirements by sacrificing the available resource to the lower tiers. A customer facing web service might be granted preference over development and test services. Priority end user experience is protected. To summarize, once again no changes to infrastructure were made, virtual machines and the configurations were pre-provisioned. No new IP addresses, host names, operating systems, or services were introduced. Slightly higher risk than overflow, as low priority services might suffer. The key to success in this methodology is in the planning of the rules and regulations that govern as to when to enforce the tiered access of resources. You've been listening to Nathan Pierce at F5 Networks. Thank you.